Welcome back. Uh, we have successfully caught up with the official Stockfish latest changes, and we're trying to figure out... One thing didn't quite go right during this merge. Um, so you note that one of the steps, Step 7 Razoring, has been deemed unprofitable uh, and overly complex, and it was tremendously complex, immensely complex, and yes, I do think its removal is a good thing, but as a practical consequence, now I've got all this leftover code for variants that skipped the quiescent search, that maybe some or all of this could be removed. So, yeah, I don't know what to make of this. So the reason we skipped this block is because we had to skip this one before it. But perhaps for some of these four variants, now that quiescent search has been removed, uh, perhaps it's possible to use this block again? I don't know. Um, yeah, only time can tell. Time and some experimentation. Uh, okay, well, I don't doubt that, like, this for helpmate probably needs to be this way. Um, because this is not playing a game, this is actually doing an exhaustive search over nodes to try to find if both players work together, can you achieve an unexpected outcome. Um, I guess anti-chess and loser's chess have this strange nature. Wait. Wait, what is this for? Oh. Should that expression be the same as this expression? Um, maybe so. I don't know. I think I was trying to make this expression the same as that one. Um... So, conditionally, we would... Well, because we still had some need to skip over, like, if we have a capture. Okay, yeah. Possibly also some of this could be merged in, into this step right here, where we say we're going to skip futility pruning specifically. Uh, where does moves loop begin? I don't remember. It's like way the heck down here that we start iterating through all the moves and searching them all. After we've done every kind of probabilistic cut. Yeah. Alright, I guess we'll explore the rest of this not looking at a browser, but instead looking at a terminal. Because why not? Um, oh, I have a capture for my terminal. Does my terminal capture work? Transform, reset. All right. Transform. I mean, the properties of this are kind of strange because this is an enormous window and it doesn't look that way. Um, 720 pixels high. I think 1280 wide. Yeah. So. Oh. That's right. So you only get to see uh, the contents of this. Um, you're not getting to see the title banner. And that's fine. This actually works out well because it makes room for the chat window below. All right. Well, so now that I've got this fixed in place, let's block it. Um, so, I was fixing my Z login file to put me in this uh, source directory by default. Um, oh, I have a build, sh uh, build script, a uh, bash script here, that um, executes all the variants. Um, and make sure that standard chest still produces the correct number of search nodes. 
we're not going to encounter that sort of problem right now. So let's instead just run um, whichever variant we're most interested in verifying. So, so we got losers here. And we can build this. I've already built it. Uh, unable to open file 13. That sounds pretty serious. <laughs> oh dear. Let's try this again. Say, so see how we uh, perform a parallel build where it's taking multiple CPP files and compiling them in a pipeline faster than any uh, than it would be done if you were to do them all in, in series. Um, although I think I only have about three. Well, no. Yeah, I. Hmm. This doesn't look right. Have I disabled? No, I've limited this to three. Let's increase the parallel build size to six. So they, it's said that when you're doing compilation, you want to have a number of parallel jobs uh, equal to the number of cores times one and a half, so that no core is ever waiting for a job on average. Um, unable to open file 13. Okay, what have I done wrong here? I don't understand. Uh, yeah, this is my variant version of the engine. Oh, this doesn't have losers enabled. That's the problem. Yeah, let's, uh, now that I've restored the complete make file with all the variants enabled, I have to do a full recompilation of all the source code, or at least of the files that contain each variant. And a lot of files contain uh, all the variants or some reference to an array of variants. So because those uh, array bounds increase as I change the preprocessor directives here, like namely there's this D losers, the losers preprocessor flag um, enables one fragment of each array. This way I'm able to use these uh, directives to enable or disable um, builds on a per variant basis, uh, which simplifies debugging quite a bit. If I can just toggle the switch and know that certain branches of code will never be invoked, um, or certain array elements just won't be present. Yeah, having feature switches is a really powerful tool. Um, so, yeah, I was running this here. Uh, I'm going to move this file, which is 2.txt. I'm going to save it, a backup of this as 1.txt. And take a look at my build script, which normally, um, well, it does compare 2 and 1. Uh, and compiles if necessary, but no compilation here is necessary. Um, the width of my screen that I'm looking at here, because I'm operating on a 720p display, I think it's less than 237 pixels wide. Okay, it's less than 187. Um, I forget. It was 157 uh, capturing enough of this? Yeah. I think we get the gist of the... Yeah, maybe 157 is the correct dimension here. Uh, just because I have large text on this small monitor. Or low resolution monitor. Um, so yeah, we see here's the number of nodes searched in testing all six positions with the losers variant. Um, so the next thing... Uh, yeah... We've removed razoring, um, and I'm considering can I, well, I was going to change this block here to look more like the following. <sighs> oh, 
Hang on. Um, so we can actually one, two, three, four. Take this block, move it down here. Um, there we go. No need to copy expressions after all. So this skips all the following, which may or may not make sense anymore. Um, let's see, what else can I consider? Uh, I know I have this switch pattern in various places in code here. So the idea is that I say that for standard chess, I want to do the last thing in the switch block. Uh, and I establish all the other cases before it. So by default, we want to check if we're improving. Um, all right, uh, let's take this Racing Kings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, move that down here, uh, case race variant, um, so, and then there's a ball through. Uh, keyword, I forget, is this how I do this annotation? Let's take a look. Oh, I got it right. Nice. Uh, we can indent this. Alright, and then we want to do similar for helpmate, etc. Um, so, instead of having this if block here, now the odd thing about this is we might not need so much uh, this code might all be redundant. Oh, hang on. Um, yeah, fall through is not going to work very well here, is it? All right, so I thought it was clever by using this switch pattern, but it turns out if you have multiple default cases, this pattern doesn't work so well. Okay, let's copy these four lines into the buffer. Um, yeah, and then go back down here, so we can keep this go-to, uh, for losers, and these other blocks, hmm. this escape analysis is tricky. Mm-hmm. Like, do I need this go-to statement anymore for helpmates? Or could helpmates potentially... Well, let's handle one thing at a time. So this is functionally equivalent to... Well, close enough. Um, yeah, let's, let's verify I have not broken this. Um, this is not exactly equivalent because now we have a more precise evaluation of improving for losers. Although... On our benchmarks, we see the number of nodes is similar. It's not exactly the same. Uh, the deeper we search, the more this will diverge. It will diverge, certainly. But I think having this more precise definition uh, of... Oops. So I have uh, a plugin. In, no, I have Z Shell, which does auto-completion. And sometimes that confuses me. But yeah, this is a way to simplify my previous code change. Uh, so now we benefit from having a more precise definition of improving 
not shown here, but it's between this line and these lines. That here, this is only going back two half moves. And we also want to leverage the, maybe there's been an improvement in the last four half moves. Um, simplify, improve, uh, Losers, improvement, formula. Yeah. Uh, detection of you uh, would improve evaluation. So, um, I mean, I could run this through the full gauntlet of tests I've got here, make sure I've not broken anything with respect to standard chess. Uh, sure, why not? Let's, well, this, doing the benchmark is kind of ridiculous, but fine. Let's, let's run the gauntlet. I've not changed the move generator, so there's no need to test the move generator. Um, this should not change the number of nodes that are searched in a uh, standard chess search. And it should not... Um, what was the other thing I was trying to figure out? Oh, the puzzle um, module that I have installed should still evaluate uh, crap. Uh, okay. Possibly that was broken before I started making changes. I need to Figure that out at some point. I don't have the wherewithal right now to fix that. Um, we'll fix that later after it's merged. My puzzle.sh uh, script here is doing something unexpected. I did recently upgrade this machine, so possibly some of my dependencies are missing. Um, so. If I didn't upgrade it correctly. I think I did, but I'm not sure what else could account for exp4 file missing. I'd have to take a deeper dive into that than I'm willing to take right now. Uh, so let's just verify that standard chess has no functional change here. Um... So also this simplifies um, the code that we're... Well, actually, this doesn't simplify anything that gets deployed for Lee Chess because Lee Chess doesn't have the variant losers. Um, I forget under what condition that variant got added, but it's there now. So we're going to continue supporting it for a while. Uh, long before, after the point at which it's comfortable con to continue supporting it. Um, get check out no neural network rebase master get check out master get push uh, the no neural network branch there we go um, so next up and the continuous integration pipelines can do the remainder of the testing there uh, so Yeah, we still have these three branches. There's jumping to moves loop. And I don't know. Maybe for some of these, now that quiescent search is out of the picture. Uh, I don't know how much of this it's necessary to skip anymore. Uh, I think Racing Kings was added to this list because... Something about quiescent search didn't work right with it. Um, I'm not sure if I need this block for racing kings. Oh, well, actually, I should. I don't know how in my terminal to best do this. It's probably easiest to do this from the web browser, but git blame would show us the condition under which this code was added or the timing. And let's take a look at uh, this in the web browser again. Oop. 
All right, so this is my most recent merge, but the subject of interest now is search.cpp. And we want to see who changed which lines of code and when. Unfortunately, this operation is performed for the entire file, so uh, let's see. We moved. Oh. Well, I would like an in-browser search function. Yeah, there we go. So this comment where I say removed, that's been changed recently, but this condition, conditionally skip early pruning in Racing Kings. Skip early pruning if one of the kings is on the 7th or 8th rank. All right. So this wasn't even about fixing a bug. This is just a straight up improvement. Now, maybe this is an improvement because of quiescent search causing a problem, but this is not a bug fix, so I shouldn't be so cursory about trying to remove it. Um, yeah, this helpmate, I think I had to introduce this here because quiescent search was causing a problem. How about anti chess? Oh, skip early pruning if captures and anti-chess are possible. But then later on, simplify the giveaway and Racing King search bonus. What was this change? Uh, let's open this in a new tab because I don't remember it that well. But basically this block of code changed over and over and over. We were having quite a few challenges uh, with this code. Or rather, I don't know. Not sure why. I wish I could remember. Um, but yeah, I considered removing this code altogether, but then this go-to had to stay because otherwise errors would happen. Um, but now, now that we see like this formula's simplification into a single line expression, um, hmm. yeah, it makes me think this block had nothing to do with setting improving to false and had everything to do with trying to skip quiescent search below it. Um, it's interesting that later on we found it actually was useful to have, um, was it for Racing Kings to have this expression back? So maybe I was over eager in one of my code changes, but um, yeah, as it. Oh, is my browser frozen? That's not great. Um, but yeah, possibly I could take this entire block, move it below this improving block, and then get rid of all the improving equals false things that are maybe not necessary. Um, I don't know. But this was added as just a... Hmm. Oh, the goat who skips the improving block, but also skips stuff below. Um, mm -hmm. Looks like a futility margin based on material capture value, which is... material captures are bad for anti-chess and for uh, losers. Captures and helpmate might be a neutral thing. Maybe it's not justified to have this big block of code anymore. Uh, for Racing Kings... Yeah, I don't understand. I, I guess I'd have to try... the easiest thing to do would be to strip out this code as a branch and test uh, does removing this code improve or degrade performance. Probably it degrades. Um, so yeah, I could... maybe that's the easiest thing to do for most of these is just write the damn code, um, run the test, see like does straight up removing this improve performance? If not, um, then maybe some other way of expressing something similar 
uh, like allowing this expression to evaluate and then doing the go to statement um, might be appropriate. So let's see. Oh, this is also interesting. So if there is a king on the seventh or eighth rank, yeah, it makes sense we'd want to search more. Yeah, so I'm not so inclined to change this. Um, but these other expressions, oh, if we can capture, yeah, it really didn't matter what happened before, we have to search this. Because captures dynamically change this situation. Um, and helpmate. Yeah, I guess helpmate's the only one that I'm on the fence about at this point. Um, because it makes sense, like, if you are in a position where you can capture in anti-chess, you need to search. You can't just... The purpose of this flag is to later reduce the amount of searching that is performed. If you are in a position where things are continuously improving, you're not going to search as deeply um, than it in positions where you aren't um, winning pieces or otherwise making progress. So if the evaluation is continuously improving for a particular variation, um, you don't search that as deeply as you'd search other things. You'd be more optimistic about this, more pessimistic about other branches. Yeah. So I think helpmate's the only one where I want to actually try stripping that out and see how this performs. So back we go. Um, uh, is there anything that requires me to null move search with verification? What else? Probabilistic cut. We have a good enough capture. Okay, yeah, none of this really makes sense for helpmates either. Um, hmm. Even so, like setting improving to false might not make sense. Uh, so, yeah, can we put that down here perhaps? I think that's what I'm looking for. Um, and so I could show the other way that I, uh, other convenient technique that I found to exercise tests. Uh, so we're going to take this comment, stick it up here, do that, and that, and there we go. Um, so I haven't changed any of the lines of code, I just changed the comment. Um, so we're going to move Stockfish to keep a copy of it. And then now that we have the old Stockfish here, we're going to compare it against the new Stockfish for the same variant. In this case, the variant is Helpmate. Um, Let's check that out. And honestly, nobody that I know of is actually actively using this helpmate detector. Um, on numerous occasions, I've asked for assistance trying to um, test it, and just there hasn't been any interest. So, um, yeah, whether or not we get the same node count is kind of irrelevant. What is relevant is if somebody can demonstrate a broken use case. Uh, well, this is not so great. We found a mate in six here, and we're only finding mate in seven now. Um, what if I change the search parameters to search a little bit deeper? Does this come up with the same result at the end, despite having a different 
um, path at reaching that result. I don't care how efficient it is, as long as I get the right answer. Um, so any search optimizations really aren't going to matter for Helpmate. The only thing that's going to matter is whether or not there's a bug. Um, and I can't foresee that the that a reduction in the amount of search, as opposed to just eliminating part of a search, would change the result. Uh, okay, so position one, we detect mate in four after... Uh, that's a lot of nodes, but... Let's see. Do we have a node count? Okay, so we found a mate in 15,000 nodes here where historically it would take 25,000 nodes in this position to find the mate. All right, in this position, we found mate in one after 179 nodes. I mean, this doesn't matter, but uh, we found the mate here eventually, although we never found a mate in one. Is this position a help mate in one? So, uh... Oh, you can't see my browser. Let's go back to my browser view. So I copied that FEN, the notation describing the position, and I've set up a chessboard here. And you know there isn't a variant here really for helpmate, um, but there is standard chess. So I can set up this board. So my engine's claiming there's a helpmate in one here. There kind of is, because king a8 Rook A1 is one move by each player. Um, so it depends how you count it, but um, the key thing is that a helpmate is found in this position. The depth doesn't necessarily matter. All right, so the depth we found here was, or I'm sorry, H2, H1, King H1. That's not A8, it's H1. Yeah, the correct sequence of moves is detected here, whereas previously, <laughs> even searching 21 half moves deep, uh, the mate's not found. So this is also good, um, or valid. Um, uh, helpmate here is found after 3,000 nodes, and the left here is found after 8,000 nodes. Ultimately, both come up with the same variation, A4, B4 c3 c4 and we'll take a look at that in a browser uh browsers back up here a3 a4 c3 c4 is the start of the helpmate uh a3 i'm missing my board coordinates a3 a4 Um, oh, that was king a4, c3, c4, did I have this right? Let me check I got the then black to move. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the first move is a4, b4, not a3, a4. So they both came up with this move as the first move of the helpmate. Um, rook c4. The next helpmate move is, um, actually I could scroll up in my terminal a bit. B4, B3, G2, E1, um, B3, B2, E1, D3. Yeah, so Stockfish found this helpmate. So with my code change, it's finding the helpmate faster, but the important thing is that it's found at all. Uh, so now let's get our terminal back on screen. You can see it did status to show here's the files in my workspace. Uh, diff shows here's the code change where I edited the comment at the head of this code, took this block that says helpmate, removed the redundant comment here, and this block that says helpmate's been moved down here. And it's just, so now we're using this expression for uh, helpmate solving 
and then jumping to um, skipping past all the futility pruning, uh, which doesn't really assist helpmate solving at all. So skipping past that, going directly to the search uh, based on whatever our candidate move is. Um, so previously, um, yep. let's copy this. Oh, yeah, so we want help me detection of improved evaluation. Uh, so, oh, hang on. The only thing I've not done here and still need to do um, is make sure that I've not affected the signature, the number of nodes that are searched across all variants. Um, or at least for standard chess, and very uh, also verify that I've not broken any of the variants such that they just don't operate at all. Um, so let's rerun the build. This should be very well. All the source code has been built into the engine. I need to come up with some kind of animation that makes this part look more interesting. Um, also, I realized now that the bottom line in my terminal is occluded by my chat. So um, you can see when I'm coding, but you can't see my command prompt. Have to think about that too. Um, but okay, so you can see here signature okay, and then reference bench is the same as the predicted signature. So standard chess operates the same way. And all of our test positions uh, evaluated um, were searched. So um, yeah, this is not a regression. Um, all I did was touch the helpmate code. Uh, let's see, check out no neural network, uh, get rebase master, get check out master, works push the neural, the no neural network branch as well. And I think for now that'll do it. Um, so just to show like, this is what was done today. We simplified the uh, detection of improved evaluation for helpmates and for losers chess. Um, and we've merged some number of commits, I think it was six, from the official Stockfish project into my branch. So we have weak, unopposed penalty, etc, etc, etc. So all that stuff that uh, the official Stockfish team has been working on is now safely in your favorite engine um, which you can find over here and there it is uh, we can see the one month rating trend slightly positive not really great the three month rating trend negative some of that has to do with other engines just getting better some of this has to do with um, just problems I've had um, maintaining my own code base. So, um, yeah. The official Stockfish team has been doing a lot of really fascinating changes this year that are great for standard chess, that are mostly neutral for variants. Um, and uh, I can't entirely blame them for whatever decline we're seeing here much of this is my own fault and being hasty and how i choose to merge in their changes and not have time to test a lot of things and also um they are changing the parameters that are being passed into various functions and expressions um and i need to go back and retune all the arrays um, because a lot of parameter values were lost in merging upstream changes. I did take some time to manually try to uh, adjust for that, but I just don't have time. I need to do more work with um, 
automating some of this. So thankfully, uh, and this is a greater boon um, for, so you may have seen the fairy stockfish project. Um, if not, I absolutely need to show you this. Um, so uh, Fabian is working a very interesting um well yeah he's maintainer of the fish test repository and project as well which is critically important to my work it really is and we're gonna go look at that in a minute but i need to first find where he's got his um fairy stockfish there it is yeah this is a chess variant engine supporting not only the variants i support for most of them but also a ton more like Chinese chess uh, and various other Japanese and Asian chess variants um, notably Shogi and Lee Shogi I believe bears his engine and I do have some interest in helping with that um, although I'm not the most qualified developer um, Yes, so help sponsor his project. He does great work. Um, so you could sponsor him directly. You could also choose to go to uh, contribute. If you have extra CPU cycles, he maintains variantfishtest.org, um, which performs all the tests that are done for his engine and on occasion my engine. It used to be this was set up to help out my development. Now it helps both of us, um, although I'm not actively developing as much right now. So if you really enjoy Shogi and Crazy House and other variants and are excited about machine learning, you could sponsor them directly or you can go to the site and there's instructions about how to install the client for this and use your CPU cycles um, to uh, support these research efforts. Um, so yeah, he also has bug house support. Uh, his, so he's gone one step far beyond where I've gone. So I've made Stockfish, my fork, capable of using neural networks. Uh, what he's done actually uh, is benefiting from neural networks and tuning them and improving them. And I've just been overwhelmed this year and not had time to get to that. Um, and that overwhelmingness is mostly my own fault for taking such a deep passion in actually playing and learning Shogi um, and contributing to other open source projects. I've not done as much focus on improving my own engine and making it use... Uh, I mean, you've seen the coding streams I've done before. You've seen the efforts I've put in to try to make it better and handle neural networks and stuff, but because my attention is not entirely single-minded and I do contribute to other code bases, um, I've not really found a great way to make my engine benefit from tuning uh, stuff. So uh, yeah, we've diverged at some point and he's got um, some older version that doesn't have all the latest official stockfish commits in it and that's entirely fine and reasonable he's um got 5984 commits many of which are his um merging or taking the official stockfish project and applying all of his changes to it might not even improve this like he's gone up above and beyond at this point so um it's I don't know maybe maybe a year or some number of years from now we'll uh, take a look into doing that sort of thing. Sorry I keep making all these noises I don't mean to. I need a beverage here. All right, uh, but yeah, this is designed for the support of fairy chess variants. Um, so like you've heard of fairy chess pieces. Um, these are pieces that move differently than standard chess pieces and yeah supports various regional historical and modern chess variants um, and you can also play games with user-defined rules so 
Uh, yeah, this is very powerful. Um, and this year it has come very far, and in some variants it has surpassed my own uh, fork of stockfish. And again, some of that's my fault, but some of that, much of that is just the tremendous work that he and uh, fellow contributors, I think they're, he may have other folks uh, reviewing his code and giving him ideas and, um, but yeah, I think he's just put in tremendous work maintaining this particular cluster and getting contributions um, in a way that I have not, or I've tend to go it alone. And when people bring up suggestions, I try to um, make this a bi-directional conversation so I'm not the only one acting on it. Um, so when we had come up with ideas about how to test uh, multivariate stockfish, I had tried to set up one of these clusters. I'd spent some days um, trying to get the right Python version and administrator permissions and other stuff going, and I just couldn't figure it out. I said, you know, I would appreciate if we had this kind of testing cluster, I would make an effort to use it. And over time, I've made a stronger and stronger effort, but also have come over overwhelmed with non-stockfish commitments. Um, but yeah, when I've got a serious change, something that um, I think has the potential to break things, and I'm getting better at figuring that out, but I haven't completely figured it out yet either. So at one point I was just submitting every change to this cluster, and then that was too much. It really was. But um, I think we found some kind of reasonable balance. Uh, I'm not happy with my own development. I'd rather do full-time multivariant stockfish development, but I don't even get paid for it, so it's not possible. But yeah, anyhow, my goal was not to um, harp on my woes here, but just to point out that um, my bot is live here. You can watch it play games. You can see the rating trend, how this for the past few months it's gone down and it's starting to go back up as yes, the holidays here. Um, I'm finding a little bit of time to um, make it function a little bit better and make sure that I haven't broken anything too serious. Um, Leech S Insights can also be useful for detecting. Um, like here we've got Crazy House. We have this tremendous um, cent upon loss per move average. And we can take this and say, you know, I want to filter this by variant. Uh, rather, I want to see the trend with respect to date, and I want to only see that for Crazy House and see, like, yeah, Stockfish is either this means, well, hang on, let's filter for the last month. Okay, there have not been enough games in the last month. Let's last two months. Not a lot of data points here either, so we don't really know. Um... But yeah, if you were to pick some variant where there are significant number of games in the past two months, um, you might be able to reach some interesting conclusions. Um, but yeah, I think most people don't play variants against this engine. They just tend to play uh, standard chess. And I think... It's, to some small extent, that does make sense. I did make one interesting configuration change to this engine, which was um, if you're playing a low-rated player, try very hard to win against them. If you're playing a high-rated player, be more amenable to a draw. Uh, so I've adjusted the contempt factor based on the opponent's rating. Uh, so this engine behaves differently than other stockfishes. Even though it operates with the same code, it has a different personality. You'll see it try different things, um, but that doesn't shouldn't really impact the opening. Shouldn't really impact the middle game either. So, yeah, I don't really know why people challenge this to standard chess, but they do. You can see five thousand games there, two thousand games here. Um, yeah, I'm surprised that there aren't more variant challenges, but I think people uh, use this interface. They see, okay, um, I'm a player. There's a community. There's players. Ooh, what's this online bots thing? 
and they just go and challenge a bot to whatever they can think of and might not even realize that this bot plays variants. Uh, whereas those who have played variants against it before or watched it play variants would know just what it's capable of. Um, but yeah, there have been a lot more neural network related bots this year. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Code. So there's this bot runner also running my engine. Very cool. Yeah, so some people have better hardware than I do, so that's pretty nice. Um, I do encourage this kind of science uh, as far as I I don't really care if other people use the code. Or rather, I'm not biased against that. I think it's a positive thing. So, yeah. If, um, some people do other kinds of fun things. I estimate your skill, then try to play an interesting, tricky move based on your skill level. Somebody needs to get this Boris playing against Maya. I've got to see that. I think the Maya authors could be interested in challenging this. Um, tries to estimate the opponent's skill and play a tricky game that makes the game exciting. Yeah, I think Maya versus that could be funny to watch. Because one of them's trying to play tricky moves and cheap shots and whatever. I don't know. And the other is trying to overcome all the puzzles that are thrown at it during the game. But do so with a human sort of heuristic. Uh, then there's Random Mover Bot. Poor, poor Random Mover Bot. Tries so hard. But anyway. Um, yeah, I think that sums up uh, where we're at. Um, recently, yeah, there's just been fantastic contributions to this cluster in terms of number of machines, number of cores. This is really what it boils down to. So if you're looking for something to do other than contributing to, like, um, one of those projects that uh, scans images and processes them and looks for things in space or tries to come up with cures for diseases. If you have something else that you want to do with your CPU cycles, this uh, variant stockfish testing queue can be an interesting thing to contribute to. You can take a look at what other people are trying. You can see like, okay, Fabian tried this change and this is what the change looks like. And you can see, uh, based on this change, I forget which one I clicked on, but you can click on whatever it was and see this is the current test that's running. These are the results. A thousand win or a thousand games, 356 wins, etc. So you can take a look at that in real time, which is pretty cool. Um, maybe at some point I could take a look at augmenting this dashboard to look cooler. Because there's also a... Uh, fish cooking, uh, stockfish, I mean, there's the forum, but then there's also, I don't remember, they have a website somewhere where you can find, um, their live test results too. Uh, yeah, so this forum is where the majority of the discussion takes place. You have to have a Google account to participate, and I'm not the greatest fan of that, but whatever. They have an active discussion, they have a Discord, they have other places they talk, but yeah, this variant fish test done by Fabian Victor in Germany is excellent. Uh, go support it, go try this out. You'll find more and more of this, I think, on Lee Shogi. Hopefully we'll continue seeing this improve. I'm not playing a huge part in this effort yet, but you know, if I'm playing against um, this engine or watching it analyze a game and see something strange, I might point that out. That kind of feedback is probably useful. There's other feedback here. It's a lot of work for one person. I'm amazed Fabian makes as much progress as he does. So, uh, yeah, really go check out and see if that's something that interests you. Um but yeah, also kudos to Leechus for putting together this bot portal. I know there's been a lot of confusion in the forums about what are bot accounts for, why do we have bots, um, and I think Leechus has done a good job um, moderating those discussions and explaining things to the people and coming up with blog posts explaining. Like here we've got Maya1, which is a new AI 
Uh, I'm currently playing three games, is that right? Only playing three games. Uh, previously I've seen this play like 20 games at once. Uh, it was trained on human players, and you can go watch it play, and it tries to emulate human play. And I think Leech Us put out a blog post explaining just all the new bots that keep getting released and all the great, exciting open source projects that are being worked on. Um, oh, I didn't realize that TV switched so frequently, but yeah. Open source is great. Science is great. It tells us things that we didn't know. Um, that's why we conduct the experiments. Um, so yeah, uh, part of this stalling for time has allowed me to check out the status of my own build server. Um, I guess one future to do here. Uh, we've seen that TravisCI.org is going away. There's migrating to Travis.com, I think, or TravisCI.com, I don't remember, but Basically, uh, Travis is starting to monetize their efforts, in, which kind of makes sense because GitLab and I'm sure eventually GitHub will get on the game there. Right now, GitHub provides free um, CI services for projects, but isn't the easiest thing to set up. Um, I've got AppVayer here for Windows builds. Um, I have some small i think this is running the puzzles every time i push a build to leech us but yeah i'll have to come up with and maybe the official stockfish team will provide guidance here um uh, come up with some kind of replacement for travis um just to make sure i haven't broken all the various um operating systems and build configurations and things because i don't know that i can afford whatever enterprise costs um Travis is going to start charging. I don't think I'd have the resources for that. So uh, I'm going to have to find a way to get that built with uh, GitHub or change what platforms we choose to support or something like that. I'm not sure. It's not as if I'm... If I break something, I in terms of like if this does no longer compiles on some 10 old... 10 year old version of Linux that one person has a copy of, that one person will let me know when things break. But uh, in the interim, while I can still afford having this Travis service, I'll deal with whatever build errors, etc. it generates. Uh, it does run a lot of tests all in parallel. It, these tests can take a long time. It's a lot of computation power. Um, over like 5,000 commits, it's performed four tests per commit. Each test can take between like 10 minutes and an hour. So most of them take closer to 10 minutes. But it adds up. I can understand why Travis is uh, uh, be shutting down in several weeks. And things will be moving to TravisCI.com. And stay tuned here for more information. So we'll see uh, what the next year brings with regard to that. Um, yeah, already some of these things are starting to time out this year, which is why I started migrating part of my CI pipeline from Travis to GitHub. I might have to make further effort with that and or set up my own GitLab locally that can do all the same sorts of things that are done here. But that'd be a pain. And why do that locally when you can do something up in the cloud? Anyway, um, sorry for the huge ramble. Uh, lots of strange thoughts all at once. But um, yeah, it's good to see um, science in action. And uh, yeah, for the most part, um, these builds have been pretty successful. And we'll be able to watch my bot play on Leech Us and... Yeah, you know, this collaboration with Leash Us over the years. Um, and in fact, I've not even mentioned the most interesting part of this. This year we've released Stockfish 12. So for server side analysis, they are using um, all the latest neural networks that are provided by the official Stockfish team. Uh, in a browser, 
we're still able to use Stockfish 12 just without the neural networks. And so I'm maintaining two branches in Stockfish in my code base. And that's what this no NNUE build is about. It's because there's so much concern about could we run a Stockfish and not worry about triggering any of the neural network code. I actually have a branch of Stockfish that avoids or comments out effectively all of the neural network code. So um, I've got all these uh, preprocessor flags throughout our code called use NNUE. And so by setting this build parameter um, from uh, that were, oh, how do I say this? Um, so by default, the make file will assert whether or not NNUE is passed in at runtime or at compile time. Um, and if at compile time, NNUE is passed as a parameter and the value passed is uh, the literal yes or the literal no, you'll know what this is supposed to do. But uh, this here changes the default behavior um, to only pass this use NNUE parameter if uh, at build time you specify NNUE equals yes. Otherwise, you just don't uh, provide this parameter at all. So actually, that's not that's a really misleading name. Um, what I really should do is just straight up remove this block of code here. Or, yeah. Because you'd never want to check out this branch and then set NNU equals yes. Like, uh, here I'm changing the default behavior, but um, probably should just remove this. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's what's up here. Um... So I think I might hand us over to another developer soon. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.